How you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Moustache with some new tips in order to help you create in your own green area, indoor or outdoor, following the principle of do as nature does. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about past mistakes that I made in my garden and at the time I felt like failing miserably. Nowadays I'm honestly glad they happened because I learned loads of amazing things. Luckily for you, there is no need to experience such things ruining a whole season and this is exactly the reason why I'm doing new videos every week with new tips. For example, there are certain plants that are extremely easy to grow, but if planted straight into your garden, they will overtake the whole space, turning your dream garden into a real nightmare. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you all you need to know about growing mint in your garden. Mint is an aromatic herb that comes from the name menta. There is a great story behind this brilliant plant. Native to the Eastern Mediterranean, mint gets its name from the nymphae minte. Gillus Persephone turned her into a lowly mint plant after she had an affair with Pluto. The mint plant is common and a favorite of many gardeners, so it's easy to grow your own. Mint tastes sweet and produced a lingering effect on the tongue. The fresh leaves have the most flavor and scent and I use them mostly to make tea or cocktails. You can store fresh mint in the refrigerator or you can hang it upside down until dry. Once dry, store it in a jar or a sealed plastic bag. These allow you to enjoy mint all year round. There are many different strains of mint available and I'm currently growing a few, including banana mint, chocolate mint, ginger mint, lime mint, pepper mint, and my absolute favorite, pineapple mint. Avoid growing different varieties of mint close together, either in pots or ground, as they could potentially lose their individual flavor and scent. A few years ago, I made the mistake to plant mint straight in the ground in the only spot of open ground that I have in my garden. It took over the whole space and trying to control it was absolutely pointless. I had to remove all the existing plants and dig up roughly one meter deep of soil and sift through it. The reason is that mint roots spread easily because of the resilient rhizomes. If you checked my video about ginger, a rhizome, it's a large underground stem that grows horizontally and shoots out roots and new shots. This means that even if a small bit of root is still in the ground, it will develop new shots. This is why you should always grow mint either in isolation or in containers. It grows well in both full sun and partial shade. However, if you live in a hot climate, it's recommended to grow it in partial shade. Feed your mint with an organic fertilizer like well-rotted manure or a slow-release fertilizer. You should start feeding your mint when spring begins or roughly one month after you planted it. Water mint regularly and keep the soil moist but not soaked wet. A quick trick to understand if your plant needs water is to stick your finger into the soil and you can tell if it's dry or still moist. Mint thrives great in pretty much any kind of moist, well-draining and rich soil. I recommend to buy a premix from your local garden center or you could potentially make your own. I make my own by mixing 50-50 good potting soil and mature compost. You could also grow mint on your windowsill by using well-draining soil and slow-release fertilizer. I also mulch the soil to retain moisture and limit the amount of weeds that could potentially grow in the same area where the mint is growing. Spread around 2-3 inches of mulch around the base of each mint plant. Do not spray your mint with any kind of chemical pesticide. The residue of the pesticide could be easily ingested once you consume the leaves. However, there are many kinds of pests that could potentially attack your mint. For example, mites and aphids are a really common issue for mint plants. If you have a light infestation, you could potentially just spray your plants with a strong jet of water and this will get rid of the aphids. As a last resource, insecticide might be needed if there is a really strong infestation. Look for insecticides with imidacloprid. This will kill the aphids without harming any other beneficial insects like bees and butterflies. I also use nematodes as a preventive measure. You could simply mix it with water and directly water the base of your plants or spray the leaves. I personally noticed the two application of nematodes roughly at one month distance between each other 
they drastically reduce the amount of pests attacking my plants. Natural predators like lacewings or ladybugs could be released at the beginning of the season so you would have an organic pest control in your garden. Mint, it's a plant that grows really dense and sometimes much more than what we can consume. However, even if you don't use it straight away, it's recommended to prune it down and store it for later use. You should always prune back lateral shots and top up a few nodes. Your mint will benefit from pruning, especially at the end of the season when the plant is due to go dormant. I usually prune it down pretty much to ground level at the end of the season, so for the next season it will come back even stronger. Also this is a great chance to clone your mint and make many more plants. To clone it you should simply cut one of the stems between three six nodes and remove the lower leaves and stick the stem into a cup or glass with water. Depending on the weather, you will have new roots in about 5-8 days and you can then transfer it into soil. Alternatively, you can plant it straight into soil and it will take root in about 10-15 to 15 days. If you plant it in pots, do not plant it with any other plant or the roots will slowly suffocate all the other plants around it. Mint can sometimes get rust, which is a disease that appears as small orange spots that they appear on the underside of every leaf. To get rid of it, just use an organic fungicide and make sure to let it dry out between the waterings. You can start harvesting leaves mint once your plant have multiple stems that they reach a size of six to eight inches long. This should take about two months if you start from seed or a bit less if you both plant from the nursery. Do not harvest more than one third of the plant at any time because you might potentially weaken the plant and send them into their final decline. I hope you liked today's video, and if so, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you next Friday for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.